The digital universe has certainly come a long, very long way since 1948 when Claude Shannon created the name BIT as a measure for unity of information. Today, the digital universe, which according to IDC was about 1.2 zettabytes in 2011, is growing at a rate of 44 times during this decade. While this is certainly a really big, big data accomplishment, one question remains, why does big data matter? Is this just an exercise in storage capacity or on the ability to manage data coming at high volumes or at high speed or both? Well, big data matters not only because of the technological challenges it imposes, and it will be the often intangible effects that will transform the way we work and live. Too abstract or too philosophical to grasp? So let me give you a concrete evidence of how big data is transforming the way we live, and we will start with the automotive industry, which, just like data, has evolved a long way since the most influential car of the 20th century, the Model T, of course, was introduced by Henry Ford in 1908. We have certainly been hearing a lot about electric vehicles, and I'm not referring to cable cars or hybrid cars, but to all electric cars like the Fluence ZE by Reno being used today in Israel. These cars operate 100% on energy provided by in-car batteries, which provide a range of 100 miles, take five minutes to switch at a changing station, and can be fully charged in stations at home, offices, or public places in only six to eight hours. Of course, all of this could only be achieved because of major technological evolutions that enabled longer lasting, higher capacity, quickly rechargeable, lower weight and lower cost batteries, cars and engines operated entirely on electrical power, and a state-of-art operation center that is connected to every single car, notifying them when the batteries need to be recharged and guiding them to the nearest location. And how is that related at all to big data, you may ask? Well, the secret not so secret about all electric cars is that charging one battery consumes as much energy as a small household. This means that by buying an electric car, a house doubles its energy consumption overnight, truly impacting the capacity requirements on the electric grid. In essence, electrical cars force the electric grid to be extremely well managed to ensure the availability of power when needed, where needed and at the capacity needed, and to avoid massive blackouts, which can easily lead to panic and chaos. And that is where big data comes in. In one hand, the monitoring of the electric grid provides an understanding of power collection, distribution and availability in real time. On the other hand, Every electric car comes equipped with a sophisticated monitoring and communication system that provides real-time data on the location of the car and information related to its performance, consumption, and energy reserves. Together, they generate a constant inflow of big data in high volumes and from a variety of sources that needs to be analyzed and acted upon in real time to prevent blackouts. In fact, Modern cars today are considered major computational endpoints. But wait, enabling an electric grid with big data means to not only collect data, but to also analyze the data in near real time. And this is precisely the core of why big data matters. Big data matters because of three very simple, but very interrelated reasons. First, the big data generated, collected, and stored today hold a tremendous amount of information that was simply not available before and it was truly unknown to us. This is very exciting because it's really like discovering a whole new dimension of our world being represented entirely by digital data and at a very granular level. It's truly the big data parallel universe with its own physics and biology as defined by George Dyson. Second, the value locked into big data can be uncovered through automated big data analytics because big data is digital data. The analysis of the data has the amazing power to transform it into new insight that can lead to intelligent actions.
Third, the type, depth, and sophistication of the analytics that can be performed today and in the near future can enable us to be far more proactive, influencing how the future is shaped as opposed to simply reacting to unforeseen consequences of the past. So now let's take the time to look at each one of these points in greater detail. First, most of the data in big data contains really new content. An example of new content refers to the world of e-commerce. Long gone are the days when websites focused on capturing transactional data, such as details on purchases, to better estimate demand, optimize stock supplies, and adjust pricing. Today, e-commerce focus on capturing customers' click stream. I'm sure what that means. Well, it refers to the exact sequence of clicks done by customers during a transaction. It captures the path that we take before we finish a transaction or abandon our cart. This data includes tangible consumer-related information, such as styles, colors, and size searched. But most importantly, it also captures the information the consumer consulted during the process. For example, opinion and ranking from other consumers on the product, the sustainability of the manufacturing process, and availability of other complementary items. Clickstream Analytics aims at better understanding humans' purchase process to tailor our future shopping experiences and, of course, to improve our purchase productivity. Second, big data by itself is not the only reason why big data matters. All this data needs to be analyzed to unveil the value locked inside. We are certainly familiar with Business Intelligence, or BI for short, that looked at all the history of transactions in a database and generated reports, modeled trends, and provided statistics on the system performance. Well, big data not only pushes the limits on the amount of data that is now available to BI, but it also adds a level of complexity unprecedented before that pushes the boundaries of analytics. Consider, for example, the simple marketing activity of conducting a survey on the ease of use of a product or the effectiveness of a service offering. Trivial days back then when we gathered feedback through pre-formatted surveys with well-specified quality and performance categories to be graded from 1 to 5, where 5 stands for excellent, 3 for average, and 1 for poor. Well, today, companies will be remissive if they rely only on standard surveys to collect feedback. Immense is the amount of customer data on their offerings scattered across several blog sites, YouTube, tweets, social networks, news commentaries, and the company's own chat and other automated customer services. Not to mention the spoken feedback captured through call centers that are seldom converted into text format. All this data provides feedback in a spoken language free format where there is no structure, often expresses people's thoughts and feelings, and it is not easily translated into a numerical value. In fact, the process for feedback collection has changed so much that we have moved from conducting surveys to performing sentiment analysis, be it on products, services, brands, or individuals and new professions are being created to interpret and evaluate the status quo. Many public offices and government officials, for example, now have online reputation managers to do just that. Third, the type of insight locked by big data has also enabled us to make some huge leaps, moving away from simply modeling the future based on a continuum of its history to actually anticipate and influence the actions of the future. In the traditional BI world, analytics performed historical analysis to learn from the past to gain efficiencies in the future, but left up to the user to identify the relevant pieces of information and how to use them. Instead, big data analytics performs predictive analytics looking for answers to questions such as, what will happen next? Or, what if these trends continue? And most importantly, why is this happening and how can I change it? Predictive analytics allows us to shape and influence the future by preventing certain things from happening and thus changing the course of actions. Predictive analytics also allow us to anticipate people's preferences and make recommendations based on that. Consider a business that has boomed because of this type of analysis. 
Amazon books. Amazon used the basic principles of graph theory to map individuals and their book choices and to make recommendations based on the graph layout. One way of performing this type of analysis is to build a graph where the nodes represent either people or books, and links are created between a person node, let us say Bob, and a book node he bought, let us say the information storage and management book, ISM for short, written by EMC Educational Services. When another person, let's say Mary, is considering buying a copy of ISM, the system can then traverse the graph and look at other books that Bob has also bought. And of course, the analytics draws on the strength that books are bought by thousands of people, and each one bought many books as well. The analytics then builds another graph to represent the other books bought by the people that bought ISM, and it organizes the graph, dividing these books into clusters according to the degree of relevance in the context of ISM, the number of copies they sold, and the ratings received before a recommendation is made to you and the user on a particular purchase. In essence, big data matters because it captures not only things, but also individuals' behavior and thoughts at a very fine level of granularity in near real time. Big data actually locks insight that can be unveiled through analytics, which in turn is becoming ever more predictive. And these insight will be embedded into the fabric of our everyday lives, truly transforming the way we walk and the way we live. Wow, that's really deep. And that's not all. We are at a very important and historic crossroad, being at the intersection of big data and cloud technologies, which is truly making big data matter today, now. At one hand, the big data era brings the ability to collect, generate, capture, and store big data in a digital format that can be analyzed in an automated fashion. On the other hand, the cloud era brings the computational power and storage capacity to analyze massive amounts of data and in a consumer-based economical model. In summary, Big data matters, and it matters today, because we are at this intersection point, and we all need to get ever more big data ready, and now. Once again, EMC is strategically positioned to enable you to take a leadership role in transforming your business through big data and big data analytics. So take the time today to learn more about EMC innovative technologies that address the challenges imposed by big data including Isilon for scale-out big data storage, Greenplum Unified Analytics Platform bringing together structured and unstructured data analytics, Pivotal Labs to help you create your agile development environment, EMC Educational Services Data Scientist courses, and EMC Greenplum Analytics Labs, whose big data scientists can help you get started on your big data analytics projects, and EMC Consulting to help you with your strategy, design, development, and deployment of big data infrastructure and applications. EMC Technologies empower you to really harness the value of big data through analytics and more.